When we eat carbohydrates, these carbohydrates begin the process of digestion and breakdown in our mouth. So in the mouth, we release a special type of digestive enzyme known as salivary amylase. And what salivary amylase does is it breaks down the carbohydrates into smaller polysaccharides. Now eventually, those polysaccharides will travel through the pharynx through the esophagus, through the stomach, and will enter our small intestine. Now, in the small intestine, we have a special type of digestive enzyme that is more powerful than salivary amylase, and this digestive enzyme is known as pancreatic amylase that is produced by the pancreas. Now, pancreatic amylase breaks down the polysaccharide into disaccharides, and those disaccharides consist of only two monomers of sugar. Now, our cells cannot actually absorb disaccharides, they're simply too large. So what happens is, on the membrane of our enterocytes, the cells in our small intestine, we have specialized types of digestive enzymes that can break down disaccharides into their individual monomers. Now, the membrane of our enterocyte is known as a brush border because it consists of microvilli, uh, microvilli. So this is a single cell found in the small intestine. This is known as an enterocyte. And on the apical side of the cell, apical simply means it faces the lumen cavity of the small intestine, we have these hair-like protrusions, these hair-like projections known as microvilli. And these microvilli together are known as the brush water and they contain these digestive enzymes that can break down disaccharides into their individual sugars. Now, the three most common disaccharides in the human body are maltose, sucrose, and lactose. Now, maltose is basically obtained by the digestion of the carbohydrate we call starch. So our body breaks down starch into maltose. And maltose consists of two glucose molecules that are attached via an alpha-1,4 glycosidic bond. And the enzyme found on the brush border that breaks down maltose into two glucose molecules is known as maltase. Now, for sucrose, sucrose consists of our glucose and fructose attached via an alpha-glycosidic bond. And the digestive enzyme at the brush border that breaks down our sucrose is known as sucrase. And finally, lactose consists of galactose and glucose. And the enzyme that breaks down lactose is known as lactase. It is also found on the brush border attached to the membrane on the apical side of our enterocyte. So to summarize what we just said, let's take a look at the following diagram. So we eat the carbohydrates such as starch. In the mouth, salivary amylase breaks down the carbohydrates, very large molecules, into polysaccharides, smaller ones. These polysaccharides ultimately end up in the lumen of the small intestine where our pancreatic amylase breaks down the polysaccharides into to disaccharides, our maltose, sucrose, and lactose. Now, maltose is broken down at the brush border into two glucose molecules. Sucrose is broken down at the brush border by sucrase into fructose and glucose, while lactose is broken down by lactase into galactose and glucose, also at the brush border. Now, the reason we have to break down the carbohydrates ultimately into their individual monomeric constituents is because the enterocytes, the cells of the small intestine, can only absorb these monomers. That means it cannot absorb disaccharides because they're simply too big. So we have to break down the disaccharides into our individual monomers. 
Now, the question is, once we actually break down the disaccharides into glucose, galactose, and fructose on the microvilli at the brush border of enterocytes, what exactly takes place then? How exactly do, uh, do we transport the glucose, galactose, and fructose into the cytoplasm of enterocytes? So we have two modes of transportation. So uh, fructose follows one pathway while our glucose and galactose follows a different pathway. So basically glucose and galactose enter enterocytes via sodium linked secondary active transport and what that means is we actually have to use ATP to create a certain electrochemical gradient of sodium and then as sodium moves down its electrochemical gradient it will move the galactose and glucose along with it. This is what we mean by sodium linked secondary active transport and we'll see exactly what that looks like in just a moment. On the other hand fructose can easily pass across the cell membrane by using a special type of integral protein that allows the passive diffusion of fructose into the cytoplasm of the cell. So fructose can easily move into the cell via an integral protein and it doesn't actually use any ATP molecules. And once fructose is inside the cytoplasm, the majority of the fructose is broken down into glucose. Now, what about glucose and galactose? Now, before glucose and galactose can actually move into the cytoplasm of the cell, and by the way, this is our single enterocyte, uh, before they move into the cytoplasm, something has to happen on the other side of the membrane. This other side is known as the basolateral side or the basal side. Remember, this side is the apical side. It points towards the lumen of the small intestine and the other side is the basolateral side. It points towards our blood vessels. So on the basolateral side, we have an important type of transport protein known as sodium potassium ATPase. And this is basically a pump that hydrolyzes, uses ATP, transforms it into ADP, and at the same time it pumps three sodium ions against its electrochemical gradient out of the cell to the basolateral side at the same time it pumps two potassium into the cell and over time this establishes an electrochemical gradient inside the cell so that means inside the cell we have a low concentration of sodium and on the outside we have a higher amount of sodium so that means because we have a higher amount of sodium on the lumen side, the sodium will travel into the cell via this special type of co-transporter protein. The reason it's called a co-transporter is because as the sodium moves down its electrochemical gradient that was established by this ATPase pump, the glucose or galactose is brought in with the movement of this sodium. So as the sodium moves in, the glucose and galactose also moves in via this same co-transporter protein. Now, as soon as glucose, galactose, and fructose is inside the cell, they can then diffuse via passive diffusion, passive transport, via a special type of protein that is found on the basolateral side, shown in green. And the glucose, galactose, and fructose will ultimately be transported into our blood vessels that are found very close to the basolateral side. And these blood vessels will basically carry these molecules, these sugars, via the portal vein into our liver. And inside the liver, the glucose will be transformed into glycogen and will be stored in liver cells as well as muscle cells. So once again, let's summarize what we just said. So in diagram one, we basically have these special proteolytic digestive enzymes found on the brush border of the enterocyte on the apical side, on the apical membrane that break down our disaccharides into their individual monosaccharide form. 
Then what happens is on the basolateral side, we have specialized types of sodium potassium ATPase pumps that establish an electrochemical gradient by using ATP molecules. So we create a lower concentration of sodium inside the cell. Now we have specialized types of co-transporter protein membrane uh, protein molecules that are found on the apical side that allow the movement of sodium into the cell at the same time glucose and galactose also travels into the cell. Now fructose on the other hand doesn't actually use this same system. It doesn't use ATP and it enters the cell via a different type of integral protein that basically allows for passive transport so not using any ATP molecule but when fructose is inside the majority of fructose is transformed into glucose and in part five we basically have fructose glucose and galactose then leave the cell via passive transport on the basolateral side so this membrane doesn't actually use any atp molecules any atp energy molecules and eventually they enter the blood vessel they enter our hepatic vein and then they basically travel into our liver where the liver stores the glucose in the form of glycogen which is basically the carbohydrate that is stored inside our cell, the polysaccharide that is stored inside the cell. Now, I should mention that this protein here is known as a hexose co-transporter protein. The hexose simply means that it transports six-membered sugars, for example, the galactose and glucose. Now, our fructose is a five-membered sugar, so that means this co-transporter will not be able to transport the fructose because it's a five-membered sugar.